In this video, I'm going to talk about capacitors, another class of passive circuit elements. The circuit schematic that you will use for your printed circuit board schematic will be this sort of symbol. But what you have to remember is that's not what you're putting in your circuit. What you're actually putting in your circuit is an RLC network, which is more accurately represented by this equivalent circuit. This is one of many equivalent circuits that can be drawn for a capacitor, but this is the one I'm going to use to explain some of the major concepts. Of the components of this equivalent circuit, we have an inductance, which is often referred to as ESL, the equivalent series inductance. We have uh, resistance here, which is ESR, the equivalent series resistance. We have the capacitance, which is what you are hoping will be there based on your spec sheets. And then we have a leakage resistance across the capacitance, some R2 value here. And that's going to be relatively high, but it is there. Now, sometimes the suppliers will specify equivalent series inductance and equivalent series resistance. And I'll show you in a moment why that's important. But let me give uh, a value for the inductance. The inductance I found online is maybe in the range of one to two nano henrys for surface mount components, which is what you should be using. You should be using surface mount components. Now, the circuit you see here, the equivalent circuit, what I want you to most pay attention to is this L and this C, because what we have here is a, seri a potentially series resonant circuit. At some frequency, this circuit is going to go to very low impedance and then as you go up in frequency it's going to be dominated by the inductor. Let me show you what that might look like. Here we have the impedance uh, in units of ohms uh, of this circuit and at the beginning it's going to be dominated by the capacitor so its impedance is going to be roughly equal to 1 over j omega c. So it comes down, you come down, 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 down and then at some point you hit the resonant frequency and it's not going to be sharply dropping to zero but it may dip down and then it's going to start coming back up. This is very important because if you're planning on using this capacitor for filtering at a frequency out here it's not going to behave at all how you expect so you should pay attention to the ESL, the ESR and your capacitance. Those are the main things. You can pay attention to the res this resistance, but uh, I think these other three are the more important components for most applications. Let me say another word about this resonant frequency. The resonant frequency is going to be 1 over the square root of LC, and so the only options you have for increasing the resonant frequency are either decreasing this L, the parasitic L, or the equivalent series inductance, or using a smaller capacitor. You can do both, you can do one, you can do the other, but those are the, that's really the only uh, handles that you have over the situation. Next, I'm going to talk about the types of capacitors. There are three broad types of capacitors. There's electrolytic, there are film capacitors, and there are mica or ceramic capacitors. Electrolytic capacitors are those big, bulky, stubby capacitors that you may have seen sticking out of the top of cir uh, circuit boards. And their main advantage is that they have a very large uh, capacitance in a very small package. Uh, in fact, n neither of these other two classes can come close to electrolytic capacitors in terms of the capacitance per unit volume for a given voltage. Now, that, sen that is their primary advantage, but they also have some, some downsides to them too. Because they have leads, they tend to have very high equivalent series inductance relative to the other two components which can be easily bought in surface mount technology varieties. Another consideration is that the electrolytic capacitors are polarized so you need to have a you'll have a positive side and negative side and you have to make sure you orient those properly in your circuit. There are two basic categories within the electrolytic capacitor. There are, there's the aluminum variety and the tantalum variety. The aluminum variety is good for low frequencies, and the tantalum variety can go up to higher frequencies, uh, maybe up to a few megahertz, and they have uh, less equivalent series resistance, but they are more expensive, so depending on your application, that may be a consideration. They're also more stable than the aluminum variety with respect to temperature. Second, the film capacitors. 
are uh, often used uh, because they have lower equivalent series resistance than the electrolytic capacitors, but they still have uh, relatively high relatively high equivalent series inductance. They are useful uh, for medium frequencies up and good for up to a few megahertz. And they, with the film capacitors, one thing to keep in mind is that they may have a band on the package, and the band is supposed to go to the lowest potential uh, in, in the circuit. Uh, usually it's going to be ground. Finally, we have the workhorse capacitors. The workhorse capacitors, which are the mica and ceramic capacitors, and these are the ones for surface mount components that you're probably going to be using the most. They have low ESL and they have low ESR, and so they're good up to about 500 megahertz, 500 megahertz uh, for most applications, and that's pretty good. They can also, depending on the variety of, of the, the, the capacitor you get, uh, the package and whatnot, they may be up may be good up past a few gigahertz, past a gigahertz, maybe up to a couple or three gigahertz. And because of that, they're used in RF circuits more often than the other two varieties. They're very stable with respect to time and temperature, and they're not all that expensive. So because of all that, they tend to be the workhorse capacitors. Now, there is a variety of the mica and ceramic capacitors, which can have very high uh, capacitance relative to the rest of them, and that's the multi-layer ceramic capacitor. It's constructed based on uh, interweaving fins within the, the package that gives a lot of area for the capacitor. Remember the capacitance is equal to the dielectric constant times the area over the distance. And So because it has all of this area here, it has a large area here. But there's not a lot of spacing between this fin and this fin. Let me change color. That D. So that, while it contributes to high capacitance because it's relatively small, it also contributes to a high electric field. Where let's say this was at 5 volts and this was at ground. So the electric field across there is going to be 5 volts minus 0 divided by D. And the smaller the D, the higher the electric field. And at some point, you're going to break down the dielectric that sits between them. And because of that, these MLCCs, though they have very high capacitance, they don't necessarily have a high voltage rating. So you have to pay attention to the voltage rating for the capacitances, capacitors that you're using so you, that you don't uh, damage them.